ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد indeed all praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds whomsoever Allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever Allah misguides then no one can guide i bear witness and i testify that nothing has a right to be worshiped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is alone and he has no partners and i bear witness and i testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah raise his rank and grant him peace is his slave and his messenger as for that which follows fa inna asdaq al hadith kalam Allah indeed the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah the Quran wa khair al hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best and the finest of guidance is the guidance of our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَتُهَا The worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Every newly invented matter is an innovation in the religion. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance is in the hellfire. The ultimate purpose and the ultimate goal for our creation in this world is to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said, Subhanah, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. And in order for us to truly establish and actualize the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that our deeds will be accepted, then it's a must that we fulfill two conditions. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He said in His noble book, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ and they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone without partners and to make their religion sincerely for Allah. And likewise, he said, describing his righteous slaves, We only feed you for the face of Allah. We only feed you for the pleasure of Allah. And we don't want any type of praise and we don't want any type of reward. And likewise, he said, Subhanah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, indeed, my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying, all of it is solely for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So in order for us to truly establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that our deeds will be accepted, then it must be based upon sincerity. So any good deed or any act of worship that's devoid of sincerity, then it's not going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the many ahadith that highlight and show us the great danger of doing our deeds and our worship for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that hadith that is collected by Imam Muslim and is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّ أَوَّلَ النَّاسِ يُقْضَى يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَيْهِ رَجُلٌ أُسْتُشِدْ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the very first types of people that are going to be judged on the Day of Judgment is going to be a man who was martyred. فَأُتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفَهُ نِعْمَهُ فَعَرَفَهَا So this individual, he's going to be brought forth. Meaning that he's going to be brought before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Allah is going to make him acknowledge his blessings. And he's going to affirm them. قَالَ فَمَا عَمِلْتَ فِيهَا Allah is going to ask him, what do you do with these blessings? قَالَ قَاتَلْتُ فِيكْ حَتَّ اسْتُشْهِدْ He's going to say, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. And this individual is talking to عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ He's talking to the one who has knowledge of that which is seen and that which is hidden. If a person wants to put on a front in front of people in this world, perhaps he could get away with it. And the hereafter is not going to be like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, كَذَبْتْ You are a liar. 
you are a phony. وَلَكِنَّكَ قَاتَلْتْ لِيُقَالْ جَرِي Allah will say you only fought so that it could be said that you were courageous, that you were a brave man. فَقَدْ قِيلْ And that's what was said. That's what people said about you. ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ حَتَّى أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ So this individual, he's going to be ordered to be dragged upon his face. Imagine that. If you saw a person being dragged upon their face in this dunya, on the concrete sidewalk, not even on asphalt, if you saw this, you can only imagine the pain and the agony that this individual will be in. This individual that's being mentioned in this hadith, he's going to be dragged upon his face by the angels of Al Rahman until he's thrown into the hellfire. So you can only imagine the pain and the suffering that this individual is going to endure and the humiliation that he's going to endure. So this individual that's being mentioned in this hadith, he was a person who used to fight in the battlefield. And we all know that al-jihad, Islamic legislative jihad, is something that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not talking about the, jih the jihad of the khawarij or ISIS. We're talking about real jihad. This is one of the deeds that will get a person into paradise by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this individual, he wasn't doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was doing it so that it could be said that he was courageous and brave. He was putting on a front and he was acting as though he was supporting the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this individual is going to be one of the first people who are going to be thrown into the hellfire on Yawm Al-Qiyamah because of the lack of sincerity. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went on and he said, وَرَجُلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمَهُ وَقَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ And likewise a man who learned knowledge, he learned Islamic knowledge and he taught it to others and he used to recite the Qur'an فَأُتِيَ بِهِ فَعَرَّفَهُ نِعْمَهُ فَعَرَفَهَا And likewise, he's going to be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make him acknowledge his blessings and he's going to affirm them Allah is going to say, what do you do with these blessings? How do you utilize these blessings? He's going to say, I learned knowledge, and I used to teach people, and I used to recite the Quran for your sake. Allah is going to say, you are a liar. You are a liar. You only learn knowledge. So that it could be said that you're well versed. So that it could be said that you have a lot of knowledge or that you're a scholar. And you recite the Quran so that it could be said that you're a reciter. And that's what people said about you. They said you had all this knowledge and that you were a reciter of the Quran. And likewise, this individual is going to be ordered that he be dragged upon his face until he's thrown into the hellfire. And this is a severe warning for every single one of us who learns this religion. They learn knowledge of this religion and they teach it to others. That if we're not doing it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're doing it for fame or for some type of recognition from the people, then it's not going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather it's going to be a reason for a person being exposed before all of the creation on Yom al -Qiyam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went on and he said, وَرَجُلٌ وَسَّعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَعْطَاهُ مِنْ أَصْنَافِ الْمَالِ كُلِّهِ Likewise a man, and he was made affluent, or he was rich. Allah made this man very rich. He gave, he gave him all types of wealth. فَأُتِيَ بِهِ So this individual, he's going to be brought before Allah. فَعَرَّفَهُ نِعْمَهُ فَعَرَفَهَا So likewise, Allah is going to make him acknowledge his blessings. And he's going to affirm them. Allah is going to say, what do you do with these blessings? He's going to say, I didn't use to, to leave any pathway in which you love that wealth is spent, except that I spent for your sake. Allah is going to say, you're a liar. You are a liar. You only did it 
so that people can say that you're charitable. So that people can say that you're generous. فَقَدْ قِيل And that's what people said about you. ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَسُحِبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ ثُمَّ أُلْقِيَ فِي النَّارِ And likewise, this individual is going to be ordered that he be dragged upon his face until he's thrown into the hellfire. And this hadith is a reminder for every single one of us sitting here today that we have to check ourselves. We have to constantly examine our intentions. And we have to make sure that we're doing our worship and our good deeds sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, it's going to be in vain and it's going to be a reason for our humiliation and disgrace on Yom al -Qiyana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Our praise and thanks belong to Allah, the Lord of the worlds وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The good end is for those who possess piety وَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ There is no transgression except against those who are oppressed وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِكَ لَهُ I bear witness and I testify that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's alone and He has no partners he aids and he supports those who are righteous. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad, may Allah raise his rank and grant him peace, is his slave and his messenger. So in addition to making sure that we are sincere when we do acts of, de acts of worship and good deeds, then likewise it's also a must that our deeds and our worship be in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because Allah Jalla wa ala, He has commanded us to follow the Prophet ﷺ and to adhere to his sunnah. Allah Jalla wa ala said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you have a good example. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرُجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ For the one who hopes for that meeting with Allah in the last day, وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And he remembers Allah much. And likewise he says, Subhana, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. Say, if you truly love Allah, then follow me. Meaning, follow Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. And Allah will love you. And likewise he says, Subhana, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatever the messenger gives you, then take it. Whatever the messenger commands you with, then do it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever he forbids you from, then stay away from it. And this verse, as the scholars mentioned, it is a foundation when it comes to adhering to the sunnah of the Prophet This verse is a proof and evidence that shows that it is an obligation that a person follows the sunnah of the Prophet That is not permissible for a person to go and oppose the sunnah of the Prophet and to innovate in the religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as it comes in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha Man amila amalan laysa alihi amruna fa huwa rad That whoever does a deed and is not in accordance to our affair then it's going to be rejected. And it comes in another narration with a slightly different wording Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa min fa huwa rad That whoever innovates into this affair of ours that which is not from it then it's going to be rejected. And it was stated by the noble scholar Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah ta'ala Al-bid'atu ahabu ila iblis min al-ma'asiyah He said that sin, or rather he said innovation is more beloved to iblis, is more beloved to Satan than sin. And this is because when a person commits a sin, whatever this, that sin may be, whether it's drinking intoxicants or doing drugs or whatever, other than those sins that are well known, when a person does this, then it's a possibility that he's going to repent. It's a possibility that he's going to seek the forgiveness of his Lord. Because he knows what he's doing is wrong. But when a person commits an innovation in the religion, whether that be celebrating the birthday of the Prophet wasallam, or celebrating the 15th of Sha'ban, or sitting in a congregation and making dhikr, all of this, when a person does it, he thinks that he's getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When in reality, this individual is earning the anger and the displeasure of his Lord. And this is why the Prophet wasallam used to warn his ummah. He used to constantly warn his ummah of innovation. Wherein he would say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْتَثَةُهَا The worst of affairs are newly invented matters. 
Wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a. Every newly invented matter is an innovation. Wa kulla bid'atun dalala. And every innovation is misguided. And notice that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't say that some innovation is good. You have some Muslims today they'll say there is bid'a hasana. You got good innovations. We know that it's an innovation but it's good. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he explicitly said wa kulla bid'atin dalala. Every innovation is misguided. Wa kulla dalalatin fin nar. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. So it's imperative and it's a must that every single one of us fulfills and actualizes these two conditions. First and foremost, we have to make sure that we're doing our worship and our good deeds sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not doing it for fame. We're not doing it to be known. We're not doing it for any of this. We're doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, our deeds must be in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَفَقَ اللَّهُ الْجَمِيعِ لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ We ask Allah to give everyone success in that which he loves and he's pleased with. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ We ask our Lord for the good of this life and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the punishment of the hellfire. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين